it's time for its episodes with quick tips you should know techniques you can implement into your workflow right here on a tale a tale oh yeah a tale of two hygienists welcome back everyone into this week's tip episode a quick preface though before i get into it so the topic that we're going to discuss today is something that i've been thinking about quite a lot actually lately I feel, and part of that's coming back from Chicago midwinter and just, there was an absence of, you know, certain friends and people that were there and just kind of hearing and seeing what's kind of happening in this dental community. I feel like more and more, especially the last couple of years, uh, some of the people are just pulling back. They're kind of retreating into their own silo and it got me just thinking about it. And I, and I'm trying to, you know, I want to connect with what they're thinking and how they're thinking it. And I decided I really want to do some research and I want to understand loneliness. And I got very lucky because there was an article that was just published also that gave a lot of science. It just gave a lot of answers actually to what I wanted to learn about for all my friends that I feel are just kind of pulling away. And I learned a good deal of things that I think that will help you. And I think it'll help you maybe with your friends and family, but also with your patients. And so I'm really grateful I get to share this with you. But the other thing too is as you're listening to this, this is, it's going to probably sound a lot more rehearsed than my other episodes. And the reason for that is I did write down verbatim every single thing that I want to say because I want to make sure I'm accurate with my words. And so if it comes out that way, you guys have an explanation of what's going on. So here we go. Here's this episode on loneliness. In March of 2020, our world was shook. It was the first time that the entire world shut down this way. Each country was impacted, entire industries were closed, and there were no answers available for anyone as to what was happening or how long it would last because we were told that there was two weeks of quarantining and that would be what saves us. But then that time frame moved longer and longer, more information came out, and then those time frames kept moving. And the world's countries began a series of isolation from each other, placing travel bans and mandatory quarantines and all of that, pulling away from each other. But long before this life-changing pandemic occurred, there have been groups of individuals who were already isolated, whether it was by choice or by circumstance. And for some of these people, there's a danger to being isolated and alone. The pandemic helped us identify a problem that was relatively unknown, almost a sad little blessing in disguise. The World Health Organization reported that After the first year of the pandemic, depression worldwide increased by a massive 25%. There were multiple stress factors to consider, but they reported that, quote, one major explanation for the increase in the unprecedented stress caused by the social isolation resulting from the pandemic. Linked to this were constraints of people's ability to work, seek support from loved ones, and engage in their communities, end quote. Loneliness was happening all along. The pandemic just increased the incidence rates and pushed it into everyone's newsfeed. On February 28, 2023, Quantum Magazine published an article titled How Loneliness Reshapes the Brain, which was really important for me because it explains some of the science behind how our brains adapt to loneliness. While the study of loneliness itself is very subjective with several points of self-reporting, there have been brain scans and other scientific trials that can assist us in understanding it better. The article explains that being lonely is not because someone has a social fear or disorder or that they suffer from a lack of opportunities to meet others, but that instead repeated behavior and circuits in the brain cause lonely people to enter a self-destructive pattern that feeds into itself. When these people try to overcome the feeling of loneliness and connect with others, they almost always view these new contacts as, quote, unreliable, judgmental, and unfriendly, end quote. It goes on to summarize behavior studies that reported that lonely people pick up on negative social signals, such as images of rejection, within 120 milliseconds, twice as quickly as people with satisfying relationships and in less than half the time it takes to blink. So these perceived negative interactions with humanity cause them to keep putting people at a distance, entering a self-isolation pattern until the feelings to connect are strong enough to act on once again. And then when they do, They repeat that whole cycle and end up deeper in the hole. As we turn to our operatory and see just how many different walks of life are there, it's a safe bet that some of them are affected by loneliness. It might be hard to detect, but there are some key signs to look for. The first is a self-report. In many of our medical dental intake forms, there are questions for anxiety and depression 
but very few offer a box for, quote, feelings of loneliness. So as we review, we should go the further step and confirm, hey, patient A, welcome back. I just wanted to review your health form again and update any changes. Are there any recent feelings of anxiety or depression? And then you wait a beat. And then you further ask, how about feelings of loneliness? And if they answer yes, that is a time to have an open dialogue and have them explain more about what they're feeling. Self-reporting is probably the quickest and most accurate way to confirm, but there are also some other commonalities, behaviors that are exhibited that would indicate that someone is suffering with loneliness. The article I referenced earlier explained that lonely people often prefer to stand further away from strangers, trusted others less, and disliked physical touch. We have opportunities to observe this from the moment they enter the waiting room. Where do they sit? Where do they stand? What is their posture telling us? They also tend to place negative understanding and connotations to whatever information they receive, which gives them a feedback loop of feeling lonely. When you present your findings to the patient, how are they reacting? What clues are you picking up from their body language and their tone? And thinking to your friends and family, do you have someone who is regularly putting negative spin to conversation topics or to events that are happening in the world? These are some of the clues that just might help. Loneliness is not easy to spot. Because being alone and being lonely are not the same. It can be the person who chooses not to be around friends and family, but just as easily, it could be the person surrounded by a ton of people. Some lonely people cope much better than others, and so the signs are not always apparent. Our job as healthcare professionals in regard to a lonely patient is really no different than when we spot something like an airway issue. We need to inform the patient of our findings and provide resources for help. In this case, there's a link in the show notes for healthline.com which has listed out all of the resources for particular subsets of the population dealing with loneliness. So there's a section for adults, there's a section for teens, veterans, et cetera. So I would encourage you to have this page bookmarked or consider printing the website URL on cards to give to patients or even coworkers and family members who might need this. I know this is a little bit of a heavy topic. It's something that's really been weighing on me a lot lately. I really hope that those people that have kind of pulled back from the dental world will be able to overcome their challenges and they'll be able to make it back. Thank you so much for listening. I hope it's been a little bit helpful. Be sure to check out those show notes and enjoy your weekend. A tale of two hygienists.